Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is an updated tier list for the Moonlight 5-star headhunt event that is currently going on as I'm recording this video in late November of 2024, going into early December of 2024. Now, this event has been going for about a month now. The old tier list that I made, that's about a month old. And there's definitely still some of you out there who haven't chosen an ML5 because you're still waiting to see how things shape up, to see if things change. Look, I get it. That previous video came out right after a major balance adjustment and the meta was still in flux. And at the time, all I could really do was give my opinions on where I thought characters would fall. A number of you have still been messaging me on streams or in my DMs or asking me in voice chat on my Discord. So I figured I would just do a quick update to kind of explain where the meta kind of is. I, we have about a month extra of knowledge to work with and my opinions on some characters as a result have changed. I wanted to wait until after the upcoming balance adjustment to make a final tier list for this for those of you who've been holding out for the maximum amount of time to choose the character, but apparently that's still two weeks out from when I'm recording this video. And there's only about 30 days or less left to redeem your character as I'm recording this. By the time that we actually see the balance adjustment preview and it takes place, those buffs wouldn't actually apply to the current World Arena season. That means if you're somebody who's watching this video that is still waiting to pick up your ML5 and you're looking to get the best possible character for your account so that, that way you could finish whatever tier you need to for the current World Arena season, that viewer, that's specifically who this video is for. I may make a final tier list on this once we actually get that balance adjustment in two weeks, but that's largely for players who don't care about the current World Arena season, you're just looking to pick up an ML5 that will give you the most amount of value long-term on your account. Anyways, get subscribed to the channel if you want to see that video and, you know, ding the notification bell to see when it goes live. All that, you know, fun YouTuber jazz. Anyways, let's talk about the current format, where characters are commonly picked in the pick order between first pick and last pick, right? And that will hopefully kind of show you my headspace for why I am rating characters a certain way, why I think they are as good or as bad as I actually do. Got it? All right, let's take a look at the current landscape of what I'm seeing uh, at the current ranks that I'm playing at. I'm at very, very high uh, champion right now as I'm recording this. Going into Emperor, I'm like rank like 1100, so I'm basically on the cusp of Emperor, and a number of people in my Discord are very high Emperor, like top 300 right now. Um, and so I'm basing my opinions off of those experiences. Most of the player base, most people who are viewing it, they're probably going to be at that rank or lower, right? So like if you're like super Omega high legend, right? Like if you're playing with the likes of KHM and Light, maybe this is not going to be reflective of, you know, that metagame, what you're seeing. But for everybody else, I feel like this is pretty applicable. So as you can see in the first tier, these are the best first and second pick characters in the game. That's Ambitious Tywin, Blood Moon Haste. Conqueror Lilius, Last Rider Crow, Ruel of Light, Sea Phantom Polidus. Then you have strong third picks. These are the things that you want to put under your ban protection. So Bellion, obviously good versus Cleave or anybody abusing souls. Briar Witch Asaria, if you're a Cleaver yourself. Designer Lilibet to counter control. Eternal Wanderer Ludwig, if you want to set up a Cleave. Mediator to counter control. Sage Ball to counter Cleave. Solitary specifically to counter uh, Afternoon Soap Flan. Zeo to wrap up the first turn either as anti-Cleave uh, anti harsetti drafts or just cleaving in general and then force bands for the fourth and fifth pick slot abyssal just as a generic bruiser also cuts down cr arbiter vildred for aggro players death deal array is a force and last pick as control dragon king sharoon to counter a fourth pick death deal array or one that was picked even earlier lone crescent versus landy landy if you just need a hail mary pick to win the game requiem rowana for aggro silver blade for aggro or control Sylvan Sage Vivian as a DPS that's solid into control characters, and then Urban Shadow Shoe if your opponent is just Bruiser stacking. So that's pretty much the intended use for all of these characters, right? So now I'm going to take my time and show you my tier list and explain, just like we did the last one, how characters are built, how they're played, why I think they are where they are. Uh, feel free to pause the video to see any of the stats on the screen for these characters. So our top tier here is Broken Units. Don't have to explain what that means, hopefully. It's just the best units, I think, currently in the game. Commonly used, characters that are used a lot. Sometimes used, characters that, you know, require a specific draft or play style to work out. It's not going to be for everybody. Niche, characters that only have, like, one real specific use case in the current metagame. And then, as you can see, the last two tiers are just not worth it. 
or characters you can't choose. And except for Eins Ulgon right here, uh, all five of these characters, I just want to say, if they were available, these would be the five best characters in the game. If you ever need proof that Power Creep is real, literally of the last six releases, that's these five plus C Phantom Paulus, they are all broken. I think they are just the best characters in the game right now. Anyways, let's start off with the broken units tier list. First up, we have Ambitious Tywin. Ambitious Tywin was my number one overall character in the last video, highest win rate character at Worlds. His kit just does literally everything. He cleanses debuffs, has a game-winning ultimate in Flash that ignores effect resistance some of the time, and he saps souls from your opponent. He still is an incredibly busted unit. The thing is, Last Rider Krow synergizes so stupidly well with a lot of other characters, and as I talked about in that previous video, Last Rider Krow is very, very good, right? He's got a very good matchup against Ambitious Tywin, and he's just generically very good in the meta. He synergizes, like, almost too well with some of the other characters that I'm going to talk about uh, in this section. He synergizes incredibly well with Ruel of Light, Hellion Lua specifically, and, of course, Laia. Like, those three characters kind of have put him, elevated him to probably the best generic tank in the game. I'm not considering Imperian Elenav a generic tank, but Last Rider is up there, and because Last Rider is so good and so prevalent, it naturally knocks Ambitious Tywin down half a peg. I think Ambitious Tywin is more suited to those players who really, really want to play hard control or are looking to play Sea Phantom Politis a lot. If you're a more aggressive player, somebody who has an, a really aggressive slant, Ambitious Tywin is still just as good as he ever was. But if you're more of a passive reactive player, Ambitious Tywin is not as good as he was in my previous tier list. Instead, you should go for Last Rider Crow. Next up, we have Blood Moon Haste, who I originally had in the third tier in my previous video. I was perhaps a bit too harsh on this character. I originally thought because of the newly buffed Mort turning off the counters, Imperian Illinav reducing his damage and injuring him, and then Harsetti just literally shutting down the character entirely with her cannot counter debuffs, her unbuffable, and the fact that she's commonly played on injury. I thought that was enough to keep him out of the meta, right? Especially when you factor in all their stuff. The thing is, the quote-unquote other stuff that normally would beat Blood Moon Haste isn't very good, it feels like, in this format, outside of, like, Briar Witch and Cleave specifically, and the others are commonly bad. So Blood Moon Haste, surprisingly, is more effective than I gave him credit, right? If you go for something like Ambitious Tywin or Last Rider Crow into Blood Moon Haste, unless they take Mort under ban protection, you're in a pretty good spot most of the time, right? As long as you can play around or ban Mort, it's not that bad, right? Right now, I feel like Knight into Reviver or Knight into Tempo character like Laia or Sea Phantom Paladis is such an incredibly strong neutral safe start for many playstyles and also gives you the ability to still speed up, right? Because if you go into a very aggressive comp, then obviously Blood Moon Haze could be your anchor or slow down into like a full-on tank down fight that it's going to be very difficult for them to win. Just in general, Reviver on two feels very, very good. They basically have to cleave you, right? And even then, Blood Moon Haste, if they can't just kill him immediately, he's going to get that grudge passive, be able to kind of anchor your team and stabilize. That is very, very good. So again, Blood Moon Haste was a character I felt really down on. I thought he was just like a tier three character that wasn't as good as he was when he first released. And I still feel that way, but I was definitely too harsh on him. He has allowed me to pick up a number of games and I've seen him have a lot of success even in the legend tier. So again, BM Haste, much better than I originally gave him credit. Next up is Designer Lilibet. This is the character I said was probably the best character in the second tier. I probably should have been in the first tier, but I was you know, a little bit skeptical because it had only been about five days or so since the character got buffed. So I didn't want to jump the gun and say, yeah, this character is busted. Now, with a month behind us, I can say Designer Lilibet is the best cleanser in the game. It's not close. Her tempo is amazing. Her damage is amazing. Her utility, just absolutely amazing. If you need a cleanser, if you're struggling against debuffs, Designer Lilibet does it the best. She is not somebody who can just straight up hard carry a game, but she will set up the other three members of your team for success. And it's very, very hard to keep her down. She will take a lot of turns, get a lot of chip damage in, and set up a lot of potential kills with her defense break. This is the character that most people have been submitting to me 
for Fix It Friday in the last like week or two. And that says to me that most people who've already made up their mind, they went with designer a little bit. So if you're just looking for a very obviously good character, this is the one to pick up, I feel like, in the format. Next up, we go to Last Rider Crow, who was the lowest rated character that I had on my previous tier list. This was a character I had in tier four originally, the fourth tier. Somebody that was like, you know, niche use. I thought he was only going to be very good versus Naqual and maybe against Ambitious Tywin. And that was kind of it. Not really uh, much else to talk about. No, this character sets up some pretty disgusting things. His only like really bad matchups are Blood Moon Haste. Um, Death Dealer Ray and like Imperial Elenab and then obviously ML Rat, right? Those are like his like four bad matchups. Everybody else, he's incredibly good at. And the fact that he reduces cooldowns means that characters like Ruel get so much value because they're going to constantly be cycling their cooldowns. The fact that you can play him with Laia makes it so that the other two members of your team just constantly are spamming their skills. In the case of a character like Hellion Lua, if you have Hellion Lua, Last Rider Crow is probably like the best overall character you can take in this headhunt because having LRK in the first two picks with Hellion Lua under ban protection is a massively frustrating draft to play against. The only really good outs to it that I've seen are Newman Luna, Harseti to deny the Hellion Lua from actually getting her turn, or Conquer Lilius on Laya's Artifact Sweet Miracle, or Designer Lilibet. And usually, if you're trying to implore the Last Rider Crow plus Hellion Lua strategy, you're going to ban probably two out of those four things that beat you, which means that your opponent has to have a specific ML5 on a limited, or just a specific ML5 in general. And that's just incredibly strong. Uh, a, a recipe for just a top tier team that will allow you to climb a lot of ranks. Overall, he is just the best knight in the game right now, in my opinion, aside from Imperian LNA, right? So if you were looking for the most consistently good and useful PvP knight right now, I think it is Last Rider Crow because the fact is he synergizes too well with a lot of these high tempo characters with short cooldowns and the fact that you could pair him with characters again like Laia to just turbo out so many uh, skills in a game is phenomenal. Again, this is a character I completely misevaluated on the last tier list. Next up is Ruel of Light. This is my favorite Soul Weaver in the game. I had her previously in the second tier. Now I think she is a top tier character. Obviously this character is great in a lot of gameplay modes. She's great if you're a newer player looking for somebody who's strong in PVE, can carry you through adventure, abyss, great in Guild War offense, really good on Guild War defense with things like Harseti and more on the team. And even in World Arena, I think she is incredible. Having a knight with Ruel or Blood Moon Haste in the second slot has won a lot of games, especially if you are on the second pick, because your opponent will have to go for the first pick in Ban Protection in the current format, which allows you to get some very powerful counter picks in the third slot. Things like Designer, Lilibet, Harseti, Mortelix, things like that. It's just a very safe solid draft and Ruel just naturally allows you to out sustain other standard versus standard fights and she's a pain in the ass for your opponent to play into if they're a very aggressive team composition she's not by any means perfect right like obviously you could still control her if you don't have a ton of effect resistance but the combination of the fact that she's just good in a lot of spots very good as a neutral pick in world arena and is incredibly easy to build is why i decided to put her here in this tier she's just probably the most accessible uh, and powerful character on this entire tier list next up is c fan my opinions of her have not really changed whatsoever since the previous uh, video. So if you took C Phantom Paladis or you were still thinking about taking C Phantom Paladis, everything that she does still applies here. One of the best aggressive openers, if not the best aggressive opener in the format, has some counterplay, but overall the fact that she reduces resources is very fast, is very hard to deal with, and has incredible synergy with characters like Ambitious Tywin, Genoa, even good with characters like Bloodblade Corinne, right? This is pretty much the aggro opener, I feel like, of the format, besides Heli and Lua. Like, these are pretty much the two openers, and you can't take Heli and Lua, so C Phantom Paladis is very good here. Next up is Zio. I had Zio originally in the second tier in the previous tier list, but the fact that I took him over any of the other characters in this tier on my new player tier list, right, and other newer players are also picking him up, 
uh, after talking about it at length with, you know, other people, members of my Discord, it became pretty apparent that while Zio is probably the weakest character on this actual tier that I'm talking about, he's an evergreen character in the fact that having turn one is just so powerful, and I don't ever see that not being important in Epic 7, right? Having a character that just says, I have turn one, especially when the vast majority of the Epic 7 player base does not have good speed gear. They are not this like, you know, 310 plus speed tier that most of these high end legend players or like high emperor players are playing at. Most players of Epic 7 cannot ever hit that. So having a character in your stable, in your roster, in your wings, that can allow you to get that turn one advantage or take that turn one advantage away from aggressive players is something that you can feel tangibly, whether you are a Guild War player, whether you are an arena player, whether you are a world arena player, no matter if you're bronze, no matter if you're challenger, no matter if you're legend, you will still feel the impact of this character, which says to me that he should be under the broken units tier. All right, now let's move on to commonly used characters. First up is Abyssal Euphine. She is still just a rock solid bruiser in the fourth, fifth slot, right? Hard to kill, does good damage, gives you that over the top win condition. The fact that her passive also cuts combat readiness in half makes her an invaluable pickup if you are looking for a bruiser that can anchor your draft versus cleave, especially these like Frida compositions or you know anything that uses a lot of combat readiness pushes. She's gonna be just be very, very good there. Again, this is a very popular character and one that I see a lot of players pick up and I don't fault you for taking it. I think if you have almost all the characters under the broken units tier or you just really like this character, I think you could safely pull the trigger on her and pick her up. Next up is Arbiter Vildred. Amazing character, obviously, for farming adventure mode, uh, especially for things like Eulogy for a Saint. He's invaluable there. But obviously, the main reason that you want to be playing him is because he's an excellent fourth or fifth pick in a lot of world arena drafts if you're trying to be the aggressor in a match. If you have somebody like Bloodblade Corinne in your third slot or your second slot for some kind of cleave or aggro draft, he's an amazing complement to that because he does similar levels of damage and odds are if a team could deal with Bloodblade Corinne, they might not necessarily be able to deal with Arbiter Vildred. So that's kind of where you want to pick him up if you're trying to play that aggressive composition that uses somebody like maybe a Genua or like a Bloodblade Corinne. Next up is Bellion, another just evergreen staple unit. Shackles of Suppression completely shuts off your opponent's ability to gain souls. Naturally, the character is just designed to beat to Hegel's ancient book abusers, namely like Eternal Wander or Ludwig or other mage based cleaves. So just having the character, putting her under ban protection is just very, very good. She gains obviously a bit more value if you have Albedo's Artifact 3F, which she synergizes amazingly well with there, right? Just overall, Good DPS, great counter aggression character, and again, hard counters, a lot of mage setups. Obviously, Frida was kind of designed for those players to get around her, but if you have, like, say, a Frida that you can take on your own and steal from your opponent, and then still pick Bellion under third pick ban protection, it kind of boxes out a lot of cleave or aggressive strategies, and I think that inherently is worth a lot. Next up is Conqueror Lilius, the foundation, the bedrock of a lot of my Emperor pushes over the last two years. This character is not as good or as broken as she used to be, but still a rock solid Swiss Army Knife character that does almost everything you could want to do on a character. Not the best opener anymore, but still a solid opener that you could absolutely make work at almost every level of play. The main reason that she stays up here with a lot of these other really powerful characters is because her synergy with Sweet Miracle, right? Sweet Miracle, which is Laia's artifact, makes it very difficult to control Conquer. So even if you don't get turn one, they can't really deny you from pulling off your combo, which can allow you to stabilize against certain characters like Hellion Lua. She's one of the few ways that you could kind of either outspeed the Hellion Lua or, right, like that speed RNG, if Hellion Lua actually does go over the top of you from speed RNG, you can at least come out of it and get a control setup of your own, kind of reestablish some order, get a foothold and get back into those matches, which is something that not a lot of characters in the current format can actually do. Next up, we have Death Dealer Ray. A lot of you guys pointed out in the last video how I said that I don't expect this character to go anywhere for three months, six months, or a year until they make an actual honest to goodness answer to him. And within a week of me making that video, they made Schneel. So yeah, obviously Schneel is an incredibly 
potent answer to Death Dealer Ray. You cannot pick Death Dealer Ray in the first three picks in the current format of World Arena because if your opponent calls your bluff and they have Dragon King Sharoon plus Schneel, you're just dead to rights. There's nothing you could do. You've lost that match pretty much for free. And so obviously the number one character, the tied for number one character, having such a massive weakness to a character that is, you know, so readily available is currently on banner as I'm recording this video. So everyone's going to have access to him. Does knock him down a peg, which is why he is here. That said, that doesn't change the fact that he's not stupidly easy to build and still incredibly broken. If you can pick this guy on the fourth to fifth pick slot in your draft, and your opponent only has like one slot where they have to take Schneel, right? And you just force ban out the Schneel. If they don't ban Death Dealer Ray, he still is broken as he always is. So you have to pick him late now. He is a force ban, must respect last pick, as opposed to a generically broken first pick character now. And to round out this tier, we have Mediator Quirk, aka Hand Guy, as the community affectionately calls him. Mr. Evergreen, as I say all the time. The character just has such a rock solid kit i don't think he'll ever not be a character that is viable in this game very tanky good damage multipliers full strip in his kit uh can't be debuffed making him one of the best cleansers in the entire game two very valuable buffs in immunity and attack buff he pretty much just does it all mr swiss army knight not as good as he used to be because well there are better cleansers namely designer lilibet but if your opponent has designer Lilibet and is trying to actually control you, then Mediator Quirk is a good option. He's also pretty good against things like Newman Luna. Not the best. I think Infinite Horizon Acades is probably the current one for that in the format. But still, there's a lot of value in the character. He gives good tempo and a number of other amazing things. So if you have designer Lilibet and you're still struggling against debuffs, he's definitely one to keep an eye on and still consider picking up. Next up is the sometimes used tier. This is going to basically be either a character that is a cornerstone of a niche draft strategy or a really powerful fourth or fifth pick character. Uh, somebody that they basically have to respect or they're just going to run away with the game. First up is Briar Witchesaria, who is currently the cornerstone of Briar Witchesaria Cleave. I'm not a cleaver personally, so I couldn't tell you what the best cleave strategies are, but I don't really see Rand cleave that much at all anymore. I see Briar, which is Saria, because it feels like it's about as good and a lot less susceptible to some of the stuff that I see Rand cleave lose to pretty reliably. So I think that's why she's there. If you're a turn two player, I feel like her value is greatly diminished. She's basically a fourth or fifth pick character that you take to kind of hard counter Arbiter Vildred, or maybe like Blood Moon Haste or Ruel of Light. Next up, we have Eternal Wanderer Ludwig. Uh, I still haven't gotten him personally from Headhunts because Smilegate hates me for some reason. So I can't give you my honest opinion of him. As soon as I get him, I'm going to play a ton of him, try and figure out what makes him tick, see if he's better or worse than I have him here on this tier placement. But overall, he's just a really strong character to pick in the third pick ban protection if you are a cleaver and even if you're not right if you have turn one locked up he could just be a pocket cleave right your opponent goes for like harsetti or something you could put zero under third pick ban protection and then pick one of the next two characters that i'm going to talk about plus eternal wanderer ludwig and just be the aggressor and just run your opponent's entire team over again still a very good character just requires you to be more aggressive uh, aggressively oriented Next up is Requiem Rowana. She's exactly as good as I thought she was last time. She is just a very good bridge for aggressive players. If you have turn one locked up, so you have somebody like Zeo under ban protection, you could take Requiem Rowana in the fourth pick slot. And if your opponent just doesn't have a way to actually kind of weather the storm, you could just CR push back their entire team, reset all their cooldowns, and you have a ton of breathing room, a ton of leeway to just run them over. So unless your opponent is just obscenely tanky and you just don't have a ton of damage like you're on a zeo that does very little damage and requiem ron is your only other dps it should be a pretty easy way for you to actually close out a game next up is silver blade araminta amazing control mage for again players that want to play very aggressively super good in the last rider crowd first pick plus third pick hellion lua draft you pick her on fourth fifth uh, with somebody like either Zeo or Hellion Lua or anybody that you have turn one locked up with. She CR pushes to the front, you know, snaps her fingers, burns everybody, CR pushes everybody back, and most importantly, stuns the entire enemy team. 
She's pretty much like another version of Requiem Rowana, only she does a bit more damage if you build her with really high attack. Overall, one of the winners, in my opinion, of the previous balance patch requires you to play very aggressively, but is still a very strong character overall. Next up, we have Sylvan Sage Vivian. You guys in the YouTube comments last time kind of roasted me because I said she was the hottest character in the game. I still stand by that. You can't change my mind. She is basically a solid AoE DPS that is good versus control compositions because, well, she can't be debuffed outside of having her focus reduced. So as long as your opponent doesn't have Solitary of the Snow or Sea Phantom Politis and they're just really debuff heavy, she is strong enough to hard carry a game by herself and they have very little ways to actually affect her so if that's a character that you need if you're just struggling versus control even though you have most of the good cleansers and you need an anti-control carry vivian is here vivian's got your back and finally to round out this category is urban shadow shoe which is a character admittedly i'm a lot higher on than other players that i've talked to a lot of other people think this character is very mid or not worth the headhunt I just think if your opponent doesn't have a way to give her unbuffable and doesn't have big single target burst damage and they're all health bruisers, it's really hard for them to beat Urban Shadow Shoe. Especially if you took that shell that I talked about where you have like a uh, really strong knight plus reviver on one and then you have ban prote uh, protection kind of Urban Shadow Shoe after they've already committed to three health scaling bruisers. I'm just saying that's a pretty hard draft for them to beat. So that's why I have her here again. Just really good in those spots. Not as good, I think, as most of the other characters in this tier. But still, in my opinion, better than most of the player bases giving her credit. Finally, we come to the niche category. This is the category of characters where they have kind of like one specific use. And if it's not that, they're not really worth it. But that specific use case comes up a decent chunk of time. So that's why they are actually here. First up is Dragon King Sharoon. Pretty much, if your opponent is picking Death Dealer Ray, you're picking her. If your opponent is picking Ambitious Tyrant, you're picking her. Uh, if you're playing Bloodblade Corinne a lot as a cleave, and your opponent is picking Veronica, you could take a really fast Dragon King Sharoon, because then you'll see our push to the front, Cascade, and re-establish dominance in the draft. So if you're looking for one of those three things, if those three things are something you're looking for, that's when you take Dragon King Sharoon. Otherwise, I think you could pass up on the character. Next up is Lone Crest Abona, who's even more niche than Dragon King Sharoon. She is pretty much only really good versus Navy Captain Landy. I don't really see her played in too many other drafts. I'm sure if your opponent is like super dense in AoE attacks and you have sustain and some kind of good tank like a Last Rider Crow or Ambitious Tywin, maybe she might be fine. But overall, it's pretty much just to counter Landy. Speaking of Landy, next up is Landy Uzumaki. I made the joke in the last video. I'm going to keep making it in every single video. This character has that anime main character privilege, that anime plot armor. She is a true RNG queen. If you high roll, no one can beat you. If you low roll, the character feels absolutely terrible. The key to success on ladder is to have consistent, powerful drafts. Landy is incredibly inconsistent and has a lot of hard counters. That said, again... She could beat anybody, even if she's not favored, if you get lucky, which means you still have to kind of respect the character. If you are somebody that does not give a damn about World Arena or PvP in general, Navy Captain Landy is one of the strongest PvE characters in the game. Amazing in Abyss, amazing in an Ancient Inheritance, which is, you know, going to be live as this video comes out. So if you're looking for just somebody who's very good in all PvE content, Navy Captain Landy is that character for you. Next up is Sage Ball and Cezanne, just really, really good at fighting Cleave, right? If you can get him to have really high effect resistance so that he, uh, characters like Zeo cannot silence him, cannot push him back and build him reasonably fast, he can just shut down an entire Cleave just by clapping his hands and that's worth something to some people, so that's why he ends up here. And then lastly in this category, to round out the video, Solitary of the Snow, she's just really good against Afternoon Soak Flan, right? and a couple of other characters that use the focus mechanic like Sylvan Sage Vivian. If you're struggling versus anybody with focus, Solitaria is a great pickup. Outside of those matchups, she is absolutely terrible in my opinion. So if you don't ban Afternoon Soak Flan because you, for whatever reason you need to keep Zeo and like Harseti or New Moon Luna and Harseti or Sea Phantom Politis and, and New Moon Luna, whatever combination of pre-bans you have, if you don't want to pre-ban Afternoon Soak Flan, having Solitaria can be worth it for you. Me personally, I would not invest my Moonlight Headhunt 
in a character that beats one or two characters in the roster unless I have almost all of the Moonlight 5 stars of the game. But hey, that's my opinion. Anyways, there you go, guys and girls. That is my updated tier list for the Moonlight 5 star headhunt. Hopefully, this has been of some help to you. Again, those of you who have been sitting on the fence for weeks now trying to figure out this is where I think the characters, I would rank them in the current state of the game. Obviously, once Young Senya comes out and once we get the next round of balance adjustment, things will kind of shift ever so slightly again. If, for whatever reason, something major changes, I will do one final update for this headhunt tier list, as I explained at the very beginning of the video. Anyways, have any questions? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.